what's going on YouTube welcome to another West's Angle and today we're at Wrightington Fisheries as you can tell it's just come first light this is the pay station so we've just pulled in so prices it's eight pound for adults and six pound for concessions I'm sorry if you can't see me very well on the camera like I said it is still pretty dark but it is coming light now Wrightington Fisheries has got three lakes. They all have the same kind of stuff in, but we're going to be fishing the main match lake today. I'm here with my dad, as usual. I'm not sure whether he's actually pulled in yet or not, but they have a canal lake, uh, they have a smaller lake, and they have the main match lake. I'll show you all three. Like I said, they've all got similar stuff in. I believe they've got carp to about 18 pound, and then mixed course fish, barbel, uh, roach, bream, tench. So they've got a good mixture of stuff in at Wrightington. Uh, one of my favourite places to fish. Uh, I think you've got a good choice. It's never mega busy. We're just going to be fishing on the method feeders today. So I'm going to uh, get to the peg. I'll probably be fishing across from the aerator. Uh, I'll show you that peg as well because if you ever come here, that's probably the one to choose. Um, I fished it quite a lot, so I know you know the, the good places, and uh, they're not so good places to fish here. You kind of get used to a fishery don't you so i'll show you that and uh hopefully we catch a few fish for you the temperature over the last couple of days uh it's dropped significantly so that might affect the fishing i'm not sure uh, but we'll have to see you've got to be in it to win it and uh, hopefully we catch a few for you so this is lake one which is actually the smallest this has lily pads and various features to fish to uh, there's a fallen tree in the water there he always has his aerators running, which obviously positively affects the fishing. So that's the first one. You've got the island or walkway down the centre. So this lake behind me is the Canal Lake. I just want to say as well, the eight pound that I showed you before is for two rods. So he doesn't mind you fishing two rods as long as you're not casting into anybody else's swim. But look at this. This Canal Lake is absolutely massive. I'm not usually a fan of fishing canal lakes, but again, her rate is running down the bottom. But it's absolutely huge. Runs all the way down to the bottom and round the other side. His main lake is called Rivington View. As you've probably guessed, that's because you can see Rivington Pike from it. Uh, when the weather's clear anyway. So let's go to the lake that we're going to be fishing today. So this is the lake that we like to fish. Rivington view and like I said that aerator peg is definitely the best peg on the lake for barbel and for carp the margins do really well at Wrightington we've also done quite well at the top end but that's the shallow side so bear that in mind my dad's already here, he's getting set up by the looks of it. Must have only just got here. He has put his prices up recently, but I think most fisheries have, so it's not a problem. It's a lovely place, it's well worth paying for. I'll probably be fishing here, this peg. I'll have one rod down this margin, most definitely. Even though the temperature's dropped, I think we'll still pick up a few fish down that side and i'll have my feeder set chair set up this direction so i can cast over to this aerator tell you what i really do need to start bringing my barrel <laughs> it's not far from the car though oh. I've just put some water in this ground bait and pellet mix and wetted it down. Those two mills should absorb a lot of that water. Um, the Dust F1 sticky pellets, like I said, two mil. And I've just got some F1 sweet ground bait mixed in with that as well. Probably a 50-50 mix. And I've just put my method mold in there. But before we start, like you can see it's all clumped up where it's absorbing the water. I'm just gonna put it through the, uh, the riddle and that should be nice on the method feeder. Might need a touch more water before we start because those two mils absorb a lot. So that'll do for now. 
feeder chairs set up. Just need to get my rods sorted and we'll get fishing. Hook links that I'm using today. I tied some up last night. Uh, I'm going to be using I'm going to be using eight mil wafters. So I tied up a couple of size 14s and a couple of size 12s for the bigger wafters. Let's put a size 14s on this one. We'll get our wafters out. So these are the wafters that I use. I'm just going to stick with 8 mil, I think, today. So let's go for a pink. And now we'll put this ground bait through the riddle. Definitely too dry, I'm gonna to have to add some water to this. Probably made a bit too much as well, but it doesn't matter, I can freeze it. There we go. That's probably not too bad actually. A bit on the dry side, but like I said, we can add a touch of water if we need. And on my second method feeder, I've just put size 12. You know what? Sod it. Let's try one of these uh, 10 mils on us. See if they might pick up a better fish. Perfect then. That's it, we're good to go. So before I get fishing, what I like to do you start off the swim with a handful of uh, ground bait and pellets. So I'm going to be fishing one down this margin, like I said. I'm going to go off just off that reed down there. So that's perfect. So that's where I'm going to be fishing one rod. So that swim started. And I'm going to see if I can get a bowl of ground bait over to that aerator. So I'll overarm it. Right, so that's perfect. And that'll just start the swim off, get some fish interested. I'm going to add a touch more water to this mix without falling in. And just gently mix that through. I'm sorry if you can't hear me properly because of the aerator, but I'll we'll have to manage until it switches off. So, quite a small swim there, so I've just put my landing net to one side there. We're ready to start fishing, I've got both rods set up. A few of you were asking about my rod rest arms. Now, I actually think this is for pole socks, <laughs> but I've adapted it slightly. Uh, these are Preston Innovations grips. I'll put a link in the description to all the stuff that I use, like I normally do anyway, so you can have a nosy at that. Uh, that's a Guru rod rest. Um, not affiliated with any of these companies in any way, shape or form. It's just what I use. And you know, I just want to pass uh, that information on to you guys. So I use a short arm back here because what that does is it actually keeps the rod tips further apart. So if the, the rod butts are closer together down this side, um, they're going to be further apart down that side, if that makes sense. And what you don't want to do is you don't want a really long arm here because they do longer ones of these. And I tried that first and it didn't work because my rod was the other rod was over here and what the what was happening is the tips were going towards each other which is not what you want you want them separated in case you get a take the swim should have settled now after i've thrown them pellets in so we are going to get fishing so i'm going to add the rod with a bigger wafter on down the margin because i think that's where the bigger fish will probably be so i'm just putting a, a, a sprinkling of pellets in the feeder first and then covering it up and then we'll just squeeze them in and that is a perfect presentation. So I'm just going to drop that in the margin. Just checking that I'm not wrapped around my rod tip. But we threw those pellets and ground bait before down there. So that's where we're going to lay it. 
nice and stealthy. And then we'll see where the feeder arm's sitting. Right, so that's way too high. Now, I'm going to be limited by this bar on how low I can get it. But you want your rod tip as low down to the water as you can. Like that. And the reason I do that and have it low to the water is so that your line's flatter against the bottom. It's not up in the water, the line. If you can imagine your feeder's on the ground, on the bottom of the lake bed, and then your line comes up to your rod tip. So you don't want the fish detecting or swimming past any kind of line. So I drop the tips right down, which means you're not gonna get fish interfering with the line and it's not gonna spook them off. So I'm gonna have that rod tip really tight there. Uh, I've got my drag set fairly high because I don't want them bolting into these reeds here. So this second one's got size 14 and an eight mil wafter on. Not tightened my real arm up. Right, so this is where these small rods come in handy, these uh, nine footers. I can literally just overarm this out near the aerator. It's just gonna be a little cast. And that's perfect. And hopefully we'll pick up a barbel near that aerator. Pulled out. So we had a fish, we had a fish then on that uh, left on rod, down the margin. Felt a bit breamy, but I mean, I have had bream take these 10 mil wafters before, but must have been a decent bream. All right, let's get it back down there. Not even all the pellets have dissolved off the feeder yet. So, just put that back where it was, close my bail arm, sink the line to the feeder. And we'll just tighten up gently to that. There's probably still not quite enough angle on the rod tip to the feeder, but it's gonna to have to do for now. I might move my chair around a little bit later, but I'll still get indications there and we should still get a good hook up. Got a feeling this margin rod might be the one today though. So even when you're coming into autumn and things like that, don't discount the margins. You can still pick up a good few fish. God, it's noisy that aerator. So I've just had a drop back there. When you're fishing a method feeder, you need to wait until the rod goes right round before you pick it up. You sometimes can lift into drop backs like that, but you might find that you've not got a fish on. I'm just gonna turn my drag down a touch here. So this is shot off. That's a nice carp actually. Oh, it's come out. Broke me. Can't believe it. Well guys, um, can't believe I got broke then. It's nine pound hook link that. Snap me mid hook link as well, which is odd. So I'm fishing nine pound hook link and, a, and 10 pound main line. So I can't believe it. It was a decent fish, I bet it was a double, but still. Anyway, let's get this uh, aerator rod back out and get that down that margin.
but that was right down the margin <laughs> under them reeds. Strange that it didn't break on the take rather than, you know, mid fight. I wasn't putting that much pressure on it. And uh, these are elasticated method feeders. So they, you know, they've got some give in them. So I'm not sure what happened, but that's fishing. Just got to move on, try and get another now. <laughs> probably, probably my only chance to save a blank all day, that. Oh, there's some twitches on this right hand rod. Some twitches again down this margin rod as well, so. Fish are feeding. Knock my coffee over. I'll have to be quiet because there's some fellas setting up next to me now. Fish topping on that opposite bank down there. Tight in. Bit of a tricky cast, but it might be worth a go later that. See if I can get it a couple of foot off the island. It's like a donut shape, this lake. So you've got your central island. Oh, bit of a drop back. That's definitely bream though. Today there's loads of people turning up. I think this is the most popular lake to fish out of the three. I think the canal lake's probably more for matches. And I think he's, the other lake, the first one that I showed you, used to be a specimen, more for specimen fish, but he said um, he's just spread all the fish out now, so very even fishing. I'm getting plenty of indications on these rod tips. Well, we're in again, guys. Feels like a smaller carp, maybe. I'm gonna take my time with this one. I'll have to land it across my other line. Just realised. Turn me drag down a touch. This one was over to the aerator. Yeah, I'm going to have to sort this setup out. I can't be landing fish across this other line. Even with these short rods, it's going to be hard work. Yeah, this is definitely awkward. I didn't think about this. And he actually had another hook link in him. Come on. <laughs> Drag it right in. <laughs> okay, so I've just changed my setup slightly. I've got my feeder arm straight, and I've got a better angle there towards where I'm fishing. I can also still fish down here in the margin, but when I'm playing a fish, I can play a fish on this rod on this side. And this left hand rod I can play in this side near the margin and hopefully they won't interfere with each other. So it's slightly better set up. I've put a 10mm wafter back on this uh, left hand method feeder. Down the margin. Still a bit gutted about losing that first fish. It was a cracker. That's a much better setup. I've got one rod tip going over there towards the aerator in the far island and I've got my left hand one down this margin and they're not going to interfere with each other much better setup it's definitely a lot colder today than it has been overcast it's a bit foggy actually oh, the drag on this reel sounds like it's gone bust might be why we lost that fish if it's gone stiff. Oh yeah, that's a better fish, that. Could tell it was a better fish from the take. It's gone under me other line, look. It's better. See, I can play this fish pretty easily in this margin. He's just gonna go around in circles till he's tired. Definitely want them bigger wafters today. There he is. Nice fish, that. Nice fish. Let's get it netted. Come on. Oh, 
went up now. Awesome. It's in. Not a bad fish at all, that. So that's probably five or six pound. And there we go. Nice lateral line of scales down here. Well, I've just changed the GoPro battery. Fishing seems like it's going to be full on today. Um, margin seems to be most productive at the moment. Like I say, I'm fishing with 10 mil wafters, so they're not small wafters at all. And they're just um, Sonya Bates washed out wafters. Which are these. In the 10 mil, and I'm just fishing them with a size 12 hook. So those wafters are nicely balanced against the weight of those size 12s. They're quite a big size 12 feeder hook. Turn that drag up a bit. Oh, I, don't, I don't think it's a massive fish. Feels a bit breamy. Don't feel heavy. Uh, I don't know, but unless it's just running towards me. Oh, it's a tent, that's why. Got me other line as well. Oh, little beggar. Oh, it's fell hooked itself, that's why it was weird. Nice little tent there. Different species at least. Well, I'm trailing behind here, Dad. Is that your third fish? Yeah. Well, we had two, aren't I? I'm counting that tench though, even though it was far looked. Can't believe how foggy it is for half eight. <laughs> Just spitting a rain as well. These pellets are drying the ground bait out a little bit. I might have to dampen it down again. When you're dropping it in the margin like that, don't splash it in, just lay it in. You don't want to spook any fish that are feeding there. Let's raise this up. Oh, Dad's in again, look. So he's fishing tight up to this far bank here. You can see where all the... Uh, the vegetation's falling away. So he's fishing tight up to there, which is also a good swim. Anywhere down this side, I think here is uh, is pretty good fishing. So I've had loads of knocks on this right hand rod here, but it's not gone off yet. I'll give it another five minutes and then I'll recast. It is really busy today. There's quite a few people on the lake. I definitely recommend writing some fisheries if you're uh, fairly local. It's that margin rod again. With the broken reel. I don't know whether it's broken or just needs lubricating a little bit, but I'll sort that. Just try and keep it in this little circle and tire it out. Get my net ready in front of us. That's a nice common that actually. Oh my god, look at that thing. 10 mil wafter again. Don't margin. This is a lot bigger than it looks on the camera. I've put that at probably eight pounds to be honest. It's a really deep bodied fish, I don't know if you can see that. I don't even think it's walking up properly. But I'll get it back and that was down the margin again. It's heavy. I'm not gonna weigh it. I'm gonna get another one. See if we can get something a little bit bigger.
That fish that we lost this morning was definitely bigger than that one. Let's see if we can get another fish in this margin. Right, let's see if we can get a little bit closer to that far bank. Risky cast this. Oh my god, that's perfect. <laughs> oh, we're bound to get a fish on that one. Because obviously the fish feels safe feeding right under that foliage. Well guys, I don't think we're doing so bad so far considering that temperature's dropped right down. My dad's had a fair few fish. Um, I've had a big, a couple of bigger camp down this margin. I had a really good session here last summer and it was literally carp after carp after carp down this margin on both sides to be honest with you on both margins i just had one rod that way one rod that way and uh, i was just getting a fish on each i'm not denying that it definitely helps if you know where to fish on commercials it's very difficult when you go into a commercial that you've not been to before you know to know exactly where to be fishing because you don't know the depths or anything and it's really important for example, in winter, you probably want to be fishing the deepest part of the lake. And if you don't know where that is, you could end up fishing one of the shallowest parts and you, you just wouldn't know about it. So it is difficult if you don't know the water. That's why I tend to stick to, you know, the same kind of fisheries because, you know, you get to know them. And you can have a good day's fishing consistently. But I, it's not what I want to do, you know, I want to go to different fisheries for you and try out different places we just might not catch as much and it's hard to give it a rating on how good the fishing is if you've never been there obviously i know writington you know i come a lot so um i'm pretty confident in the rating that i'm giving it it's got it's got toilet facilities um eight pound for two rods it's not bad at all uh for the type of fishing like i said there's three lakes and the fishing's always good you're always going to get a couple of carp you know it's even half decent fishing in winter. You're going to pick up a few bream. If I was to give right into a rating, I'd probably say seven and a half out of ten, which is generous, I know, but I do like the fishery. I like how it's run, I like the management. It's always well kept. You've got gravel paths, so you're not getting all slutched up. So a bit of a tweak on that right on rod. And it's got toilet facilities as well. Always make sure as the aerators are running which definitely affects the fishing. You go to some fisheries and they never run the aerators, but it's so important. Puts oxygen into the water, and obviously fish feed more when there's a good amount of oxygen in the water. So what I also want to do, I don't just want to fish one lake um, in these fishery reviews. I'll do each lake individually for a day session. And if I need to adjust the score, if I have a really good day on one week, then I'll obviously adjust the score depending. Obviously it's going to take time for me to go to all different fisheries, uh, fishing all the lakes individually. But, you know, that's going to be part of the fun. And it's going to push me to try new places as well. It's a little tench. <laughs> I'll try and net it. I think that's one of the smallest tench I've ever caught. I can't believe he's taken <laughs> that big waft there. <laughs> so I told my dad to try down the margin next to him here because obviously that's where the bigger carp are, as you've seen from my swim. And within about 30 seconds of it being in, it's just shot off. I was just gabbing away to my dad then and uh, left them rods gone off again. And they ripped the rod in. Decent one as well. I thought it was going to come straight in before when it came up to the surface. That's on the 10 mil wafter again. <laughs> I 
that's another good one that you want to keep an eye on that other rod it's really dark that one like a wild cat I think there's a lot of them at this sort of size in here going mental no I can't oh Westy's angling hood is full of fish slime now calm down that's a nice it's a nice fish that isn't it really dark before I drop it. Seems to be wanting the bigger wafters today. Uh, I might try a yellow one actually. I never seem to do really well on any other colours. It's only the pink ones but I've not got as much confidence in them anyway. So let's try a yellow. Let's see if we get a fish on the yellow. Me and my dad are back at uh, Stoke Hall on Wednesday, hopefully. Uh, after seeing me catch that sturgeon, he didn't come with me that day. And, uh, and I think it's eating him up inside, not having a chance to go and catch one. So <laughs> we'll be back there. I'm going to fish it with method feeders this time. And I'm going to try out some heavy duty method feeder hook links that I've made. With the yellow wafter on, it's been in about 15 minutes now. So I'm just going to take that off. And put a pink one back on and we'll see if we get a bite pretty quick if we do that i'll tell you that uh my theory's right and it's only the pink ones that do well <laughs> see just swapped over to a pink wafter and it's gone straight off so it just shows you that they are the better color never seem to do well off the other colors Definitely fighting. Awesome. Oh yes, good fish that again. Here she is. really chunky so I had a yellow wafter on for 15 20 minutes didn't have anything and then swapped back to one of them pink wafters uh, add this within a, a probably about a minute really quick after swapping so it just shows you some colors definitely do better than others but Really fat fish, very heavy. So I'm getting carp down the margin and Dad seems to be getting a lot of bream. Is that your fourth bream? Uh, no, third. Third? Yeah, third. And he's catching them out towards the island. Oh, you had it in this down the side? Yeah. Right. Are you fishing six mil wafters? Yeah. Ah, that's probably why. You definitely get more bream on the six mils. They can, they can take them out easier. It's crazy, isn't it, how one colour looks better than others. And it's not just at this fishery either, you know. We have great success on those pink washed out wafters everywhere we go and not a lot of success on the others. And we do swap it up from time to time. We do try different things. They just don't seem to work as well. I don't know whether it's cause the, the pink ones are more visible or whatever. A lot of bubbles coming up to the right of the aerator over there. So I might swap this to a size 14 hook like the other one and fish to the right of that aerator cause I've not had anything down this margin down here. There mustn't be enough vegetation here. Like there's quite a lot of vegetation down this side. I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro, but it goes all the way down. All this overhanging reeds and bulrushes. So let's reel this one in and swap the hook link and get it further out and see if there's uh, any bream or tench over there. 
I've just cast out to where those bubbles were and we're into a fish straight away. It's a bream, I think, but it doesn't matter. Nice to get a couple of different species. Yeah. Skim it over my line. There we go. Nice skimmer. Bring it over here so we can have a look. Oh yeah, that's a proper common that, isn't it? Just a bit smaller than mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice fish that. It's definitely a bream. Might be slightly better than the last one we had. Nice bream, that. It's buried in it, that hook. Ah, nearly got it. There we go. Look at that for a bream, eh? noise is all about. Not happy at all. So you can see how changing to a size 14 and a size 8 wafter has affected the fishing. Obviously I've cast to the patch of bubbles where fish are feeding up near the aerator and we've had two bream down there so it's made a difference. We weren't having anything down that right hand margin. This left hand margin rod's been in a little bit of time. So I'll probably give it another 10 minutes and then recast. There's still bubbles coming up over there where I've cast to. I've just had a bit of a tweak on it. And lots of little twitches. That'll be the bream feeding on the pellets around the feeder. And it's just a matter of time. Um, edge again. Yeah, I'll wipe this now. Alright. Oh, was it? So my dad uses um, chocolate orange wafters as well. Probably as often he, as he uses the uh, washed out pink ones. And they do really well. All sunny baits. Another nice bream. Oh, hook's come out. Look at that. It's a nice bream, isn't it? Margin rods off again. They really do shoot off away from their margins. I don't know whether he's fell up or not actually. So if we lose him, that's probably why. Just have to take it easy. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, he was fell up on the bottom of him. I saw it.
pretty full on day today. My dad's had to uh, come and get some of my ground bait and pellet mix because he's run out. <laughs> Catching that many fish. I've not filmed everything, but I've had at least another five or six carp. I've been broke a couple of times as well, which is quite uncommon for me. I've got my drag set right and everything. It's just, uh, must be some violent takes. We're in again on the margin rod. I was just looking at my phone as well. That was a really violent take. No wonder I'm getting broke. Got my drag set low as well. An absolutely mental this one. A little, little mirror. I can just swim into the net, yep. Oh. Let's see if he'll stay calm for us. Look at that. That's a big bream. It's right in the margin, that. Oh. It's a nice bream, that. Ugh. Bream slime. Well, I'll just recast back in. Literally within 30 seconds, I've got fish on. Feels like a bream. Yeah. Look at this thing. I think that's the biggest yet, to be fair. What do we think? Missing half of its tail. So me and my dad are going to have another few casts and then get packed up. We've had a good day's fishing today. We've both had a, a, a fair few carp. Some really nice bream. Um, so what would you give it, Dad, on the uh, ratings? Four out of ten, I'd give it an eight. So, Dad's going with a very generous eight out of ten. Like I said, I said uh, seven and a half. It's a fishery we know well and we fish it often. Um, we always seem to do well here, don't we, Dad, even in winter? Yeah, we always seem to catch yeah. when it's... 90% frozen we've caught. Yeah, so we come, um, I don't know, I don't know, it was last year or the year before, I think it was the year before, but pretty much the, the full lake was solid with ice. <laughs> but we uh, we still managed to get a couple of bream out, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Uh, so we always we always managed to catch. Obviously, they've got toilet facilities. It's well kept. Um, the owner's really nice and pleasant, always talks to you when he comes round. And you know, for eight quid for two rods, it's not too bad these days. They all tend to be about that now, don't they? Yeah, they are. They're Seven pound fifty eight for slightly. Yeah. Eight yeah, obviously they've got overheads to pay for and stuff like that, just like everybody else. So prices have gone up a touch, but we always seem to catch here, and it's a good day's fishing. So we recommend it. Um, I'll put the address in the description for everybody, just so you can uh, have a wander down if you wanted to. But uh, these two pegs are good pegs, aren't they? And we've caught at the top corner, furthest away from the car park, quite a bit as well. Uh, we fished one of the we fished a smaller lake before. Uh, we need to fish the canal lake again, and uh, we'll probably do a video on that as well. But the main lake, it's brilliant. It's well kept, and it's uh, it's well stocked with fish, so we recommend it. There it is, yeah. <laughs> Feeding right in. It's a big one, that, isn't it? Yeah, I don't see like that. Going okay. in which sides, because I think like, oh, they'll just go round in that. Okay. It's right under there. Yeah. Kept chucking pellets in two areas as well. Mustn't be deep there, it's proper digging, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, deep, isn't it? There it is. <laughs> it was my feeding that. 
Yeah. It's a bream as well. Decent bream, too. Yeah, it was in pellets trickling in that did it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Nice one. That's the sort of stamp that mine have been. Slabs. Yeah, no, they're well worth catching, aren't they? Nice one to end on, isn't it? So, this is what I'm going to be giving away when we get a thousand subscribers. A large hoodie. Wes's angling hoodie in green fish in green obviously so i'll just choose somebody out of the comments once we hit a thousand and i'll get that posted out to you so temperatures picking up now and all the carp are coming to the surface and cruising around so we're going to call it a day there and we'll see you in another west's angling